We are back. You're watching CNN. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Uh, the president insulted him during his battle with brain cancer, mocked him months after his death. And now President Trump is apparently so bothered by the late Senator John McCain that the White House military office communicated with lower level Navy officials about keeping the USS John McCain out of sight during the president's trip uh, to Japan. Two Navy officials confirmed that to CNN. Emails were exchanged about moving or obscuring the, the warship, but a senior Navy official tells CNN the plan was scrubbed once leadership actually caught wind of this. Speaking to reporters today before leaving the White House, Trump denied knowing about the plan. I don't know what happened. I wasn't involved. I would not have done that. I was very angry with John McCain because he killed health care. Now, somebody did it because they thought I didn't like him. OK, and they were well-meaning. They thought they were doing me a favor because they know I am not a fan of John McCain. But certainly I couldn't care less whether or not there's a boat named after his father. Meghan McCain says this is just another example of how the president is trying to tarnish her father's legacy. The president's actions have consequences. And when you repeatedly are attacking my father and war heroes, it creates a culture in the military where people are clearly fearful to show, uh, you know, my father's name in one way or another. It's impossible to go through the grief process when my father, who's been dead 10 months, is constantly in the news cycle mm -hmm. because the president is so obsessed with the fact that he's never going to be a great man like he was. Retired Navy Commander Kirk Lepold is with me now. He commanded the USS Cole and also with me, CNN political commentator Anna Navarro. Um, Commander, I just want to begin with you because just for context for everyone watching, this, this ship was originally named after Senator McCain's father and grandfather, and then the senator was added as a namesake just last year. And I can't help but think of these sailors, you know, working really hard to serve uh, this country, to serve on this ship, and then being told to hide the name of a war hero who is buried in Annapolis at the Naval Academy. What message does that send? Well, I think when you look at it, obviously the director of the White House military office, I mean, a cornerstone of our democracy is civilian control of the military. But civilian control does not mean political abuse. And when you've got a political appointee asking for something like this. It is wholly unacceptable, and I'm glad that the Navy leadership finally saw fit to push back and say, no, we are not going to do that. That ship has operational commitments doing repairs and other maintenance work in port, and we're not going to interrupt the schedule of the sailors or otherwise to move it at taxpayer expense just because some guy thinks that that will make President Trump happy. And then one more thing for you before I move on. I was taking notes as I was listening to the president this morning and towards the end when he was answering questions, he said, I couldn't care less about the boat, the boat. Is that insulting to you? Oh, it's not insulting. I think a lot of people that I've talked to over the years often mistake it. They call our ships boats, but you know, that's a matter of education. When you look at it, the Navy has ships, submarines and aircraft. We do have small boats, but uh, that is a ship and it is a warship and a fine one at that. Anna Navarro. The president says whoever wanted the ship out of sight was, quote unquote, well-meaning. Why, why can't he seem to quit Senator McCain? Because he's insecure. Because he will never amount to anything in comparison to John McCain. He, Donald Trump's never going to get a ship uh, named for him. At best, he can ask for a hot air balloon. Uh, that would be much more appropriate. Listen, there is nothing, nothing Donald Trump can do to erase John McCain from American history and from world history. Just the last few weeks, Ukraine named the street after him. Just this week, uh, in Lithuania, a great hall is being named for him. You will not erase John McCain from history, no matter what you do, Donald Trump. But you know, as you were talking about, you were thinking about the, the, the men and women serving on the USS John McCain. Mm -hmm. You know who I was thinking of? John McCain IV, who's actually still serving in the U.S. Navy right now, just returned from two years in Afghanistan. Jack McCain is part of this service, is part of this Navy. And I was thinking with great sorrow and worry about how much Donald Trump has done to harm the institutions of the United States, the presidency, the, the, the military, the fact that he has now surrounded himself by psychophants who serve not the country, not the Constitution, but serve the whim of Donald Trump, did this because they thought it would please him. And obviously, he says, well-meaning. And, you know, it tells you what the lack of adults in the room, as we used to call them, 
like Jim Mattis or yeah. John Kelly, who we could have disagreed on a bunch of things, but there is no way that something like this would have happened under their watch, whereas now it happens because he has surrounded himself by nothing but yes men and yes women who do everything they can in order to hold on to their jobs, even when it means compromising the most basic human mm. decency. Mm. Mm. Um, Commander, back over to you. You know, Acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan says that he will investigate these reports. I know you're calling for, for the naming and the reprimand of, of the White House military official who, who floated this idea to begin with. Can you just talk to me about the effect of even having a conversation about moving a Navy ship for a reason like this? Well, when you, move a, when you move a Navy ship like this, it disrupts the entire day. I mean, the sailors have to go to a sea and anchor detail. They have to make sure the ship is properly manned so that they can move it. Tugs are going to be involved. It's a, it is a larger process than people think it is. You don't just get the ship and move it from one place to another. So clearly, whoever is running the White House military office needs to be better informed. They've got a military deputy. That deputy should have immediately gone through the process. And sometimes when political appointees say things like this, it is the duty of naval officers to look at them and say, no, sir, we shouldn't do that. Here are the reasons why. If you direct me to do it, that's fine. But the White House military office does not have any operational or administrative authority over any naval assets whatsoever, except those directly assigned for the movement of the president and the vice president. And so clearly in this case, it should have been pushed back yeah. much earlier than it was, because this is a story that never should have been. And to hear you say you know, your point about, no, sir, we shouldn't have done this. Anna, back over to you and your point, your word was sycophants, right, that surround this president. Last question, I mean, do you think at the end of the day, and you let's take President Trump at his word, that he had no idea somebody was, was even floating this idea. Um, does it speak to, is it fear among those around him? Fear that he would lash out if he were to see the USS McCain there in, in the waters off Tokyo? What, what, what's that about? Why wouldn't uh, they uh, assume that when he has been lashing out at John McCain at every stage, whether he was a candidate, whether he was president, whether John McCain is alive or whether John McCain is dead, he has been lashing out at the man. And look, mm -hmm. I, I think it's important that we as Americans not lose sight of just how horrible and how not normal and how pathetic and disgusting and small this is and it keeps happening and so we've got to resist the urge of shrugging our shoulders and saying oh that's just Trump being Trump that's no, just we people cannot trying to appease shrug our no, shoulders we cannot get used to the fact that we have a petty little man as president mm -hmm. And he has affected the institutions of the United States to this level where people will cater to his every whim, even when it means putting a tarp over the names of heroes. Mm. Appreciate the conversation. Uh, Wish Anna we could Navarro. put a tarp over him. And Navarro with the zing in the end. Thank you very much. And Commander Lippold, thank you as always, of course, for your service and, and just for, for coming on in your voice. Appreciate both of you.